Hi, my name is Mark Galley. I'm with Think Reliability. We specialize in investigating and solving complex problems using the cause mapping method of root cause analysis. I'm going to use the sinking of the Titanic as an example of how a cause map builds. If you ask a group of people, why did the Titanic sink, it is normal to get different answers. People see problems differently. In the cause mapping method, we visually lay out all the cause and effect relationships of how the issue actually occurred. The simple cause and effect relationship starts with the effect, Titanic sank, and was caused by ship hit iceberg. The effect is on the left, and the cause is on the right. We're asking why questions as we read across the page to the right. Time flows to the left. In this cause and effect relationship, the Titanic sank because the steel plates on the hull were bent. The steel plates on the hull were bent because the ship hit the iceberg. This means that the steel plates bending on the hull were a cause of the Titanic sinking, but also were an effect of the ship hitting the iceberg. That's why you can ask, why did the Titanic sink? And some people may say, because the ship hit an iceberg. And some people may say, no, it's because the steel plates on the hull were bent. They're both telling the truth, and this is much easier to understand if the cause and effect relationships are laid out visually. This cause and effect relationship shows that the steel plates bending on the hull are caused by the force of the ship hitting the iceberg and the strength of the steel. Even if the ship hit the iceberg, if the steel is stronger, it reduces the bending on the plates. There are two causes of the steel plates bending on the hull. If we continue to build the cause and effect relationships with the effect on the left and the cause on the right, the effect of the Titanic sinking is the loss of over 1,500 lives. 1,500 lives is an effect. It's caused by the Titanic sank. The fatalities on the Titanic clearly impact the safety goal. The safety goal in any organization is zero injuries. Anytime you deviate from zero injuries, the safety goal has been impacted. So on the Titanic, this red box signifies the impact to the safety goal has occurred because there were 1,500 fatalities. To clearly define a problem, there are really four questions that need to be asked. The first question, what's the problem, is where many people may disagree because they literally see the problem differently. We can accommodate those differences in this first question and move on quickly to the timing, when did it happen, and the location, where did it happen? The fourth question we want to ask is how does this issue, regardless of what you call the problem, how does it impact the overall goals of the organization? And here, safety, with a goal of zero injuries, was clearly impacted because of the loss of life. The loss of the vessel is also one of the goals that's impacted, and then obviously the impact to the business. So the basic questions of defining a problem are, what's the problem, when did it happen, where did it happen, and then how did it impact the overall goals of the organization. The impact to the organization's overall goals is determined in the problem definition, and it provides the starting point for the analysis step. So here, the impact to the safety goal and the impact to the vessel are both shown as starting points in the analysis. The why questions begin from there. As people add more information about the problem, it can all be added in a very organized way to the cause map. Someone may argue that the Titanic actually sank because water filled the hole. This is true. The Titanic sank because water filled the hole can be added to the cause and effect relationships. Water filled the hole because there's an opening in the hole, and the opening in the hole is because the steel plates had bent on the hole. As more detail is added to an investigation, it doesn't dilute or change what has already been established as fact in the investigation. If we ask, why did the ship hit the iceberg? It is normal for some people to say, the iceberg is the cause of the ship hitting the iceberg, because if the iceberg wouldn't have been there, the ship never could have hit it. This is a true statement, and it makes iceberg one of the causes of the ship hitting the iceberg. The same argument applies to the ship in the water. If we never would have put the ship in the water, it never would have hit the iceberg, and that is true. But you can still have an iceberg and still have the ship there in the water and still not hit the iceberg if you just turned in sufficient time. So some people may argue the ship not turning sufficiently is the cause of it hitting the iceberg. And in reality, it's all three causes 
that are required to produce that effect. And the COSMAP easily shows this and accommodates those different points of view. Even more detail can be added to the COSMAP. The loss of 1,500 lives was because of the people in the water. They either died of hypothermia or they drowned because the Titanic sank, there were not enough lifeboats, and the rescue ships arrived late. So from a risk management standpoint, this map says it is possible for the Titanic to sink and not lose anyone on the ship if the lifeboats would have worked effectively and the rescue ships would have arrived earlier. Both of those reduce the risk of the loss of life. More detail can be added to the analysis, but in this example, at this level of detail, we can still talk about possible solutions. With not enough lifeboats, a solution is install more lifeboats. With the rescue ships arriving late, we could have radios operated 24 hours a day on all ships in the North Atlantic. With water filling the hull, we could improve the pump design and location, and we could also change the design of the bulkheads to make those watertight. The strength of the steel could be changed to make it stronger, and the ship hitting the iceberg, we could establish an iceberg surveillance program, and on a ship not turning in a sufficient amount of time, we could refine the communication process between the lookout, the bridge, and the engine room. The COSMAP shows different ways that the problem can be solved. Building a COSMAP effectively requires people to think in terms of cause and effect and validate those cause and effect relationships with evidence. This can be done by thinking through the problem. It is particularly helpful if people know how to do this with pencil and paper to just write out the COSMAP. It can also be done on a dry erase board or on chart paper in a meeting. It can also be done electronically using tools like Microsoft Excel. And we show clients how to do all three or four approaches in the workshops that we present. This slide shows an example of all three steps of the COSMAPing process in Microsoft Excel. So the problem definition can be captured on one worksheet. The COSMAP can be captured on another worksheet, including all the boxes and connectors to show the cause and effect relationships. Evidence and solutions can also be added there. And then the third step, the action items can be tabled on even a separate worksheet. So a thorough investigation is really about collecting and organizing all the information to arrive at the best solutions. This is one of the tools our clients use to demonstrate the different levels of detail when investigating an issue. It shows the Titanic incident at a high level of detail. The Titanic sank was caused by it hit an iceberg. It shows another level of detail that has 20 cause and effect relationships. And then it shows another level of detail that has over 100 cause and effect relationships. Organizations that don't know how to break a problem down into specific cause and effect relationships tend to just tell everyone, hey, don't hit icebergs. And it's just not a sufficient level of detail to get to specific solutions, and ideally those best solutions that give the most leverage in preventing the problem from occurring again. If you'd like any more information about the cause mapping methodology, we encourage you to attend one of our public workshops, which are held across uh, North America at different dates and locations. That information is available on our website. Uh, we present many workshops at our client site to work client-specific issues, and we'll also be happy to provide either an overview or give you a one-problem demo of how we work issues. The poster, our Excel booklet, and our cosmapping template are available on our website. Uh, if you'd like a copy of that Excel cosmapping template, we will send that to you at no charge, and I'll give you the format and some of the tools we use to lay out and organize an incident. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. We look forward to hearing from you and, and demonstrating results on how we can improve investigations within your organization.